Hey, what's up, everyone? Back for some more juice. Juice videos, man, they're my favorite. I still can't believe they haven't caught on more. Um, to me, this is the most, I think this is the most information I give away of any of my videos, is, is the juice videos. So if you've never seen one of these, um, out of everything, I still think my tournament videos are, are up there. Uh, you can still get a lot of stuff from tournament videos. I do tip videos because everyone likes them, but I'm just telling you, I, I, I think these other videos, this is really how you learn fishing, is, is especially these juice videos. Um, figuring out stuff over time. So, uh, bear with me if this is y'all's first time. Just check them out. Let's let's dive in. Let's dive into Smith Lake. Smith Lake. Y'all know I usually get out here. I get my I get my depth finders all ready. I get to show y'all maps and stuff. I'm not gonna show y'all any maps. There's no reason to show y'all any maps. The maps are irrelevant in this one. What happened in this was really really unique. I think it's starting to I think it's starting to drizzle on me out here. Come on. What happened to me at Smith was really, really unique in the sense of I went down there with a kind of a plan already that I was gonna do one thing and one thing only. I was gonna burn down the bank with the top water. That was my goal. And I kinda did it. Uh, I got there, I started doing it. The first bank I went down, I actually went to a place where I'd already caught them before. Uh, I've been there once a couple years ago in the spring and so I went to this this one bank and I started throwing top water down I actually had a I remember if I actually had like a swirl um, and then from there I went to the total opposite bank of that like a bank that, that looks nothing like that some dirt bank I'm going down it going down it and I see two cruising down the bank and I was like oh there it is it's it's not the rock it's the dirt I mean, instantly, within t five to 10 minutes, I, I, I was like, hey, it's, it's a dirt thing. So I start going and I start looking around and start, start fishing this dirt, like these, these kind of the boring banks. And I've seen it like this before on certain lakes where they'll get on dirt and not rock. And it's, I kind of like it sometimes when they get on dirt because um, people don't like to fish it because it doesn't look good. Shoot, I even have a hard time fishing it because it doesn't look good. The problem with the dirt is this. It's almost impossible to tell where they're at, right? Because all dirt looks the same. And what I mean by dirt is it'll be like just boring banks. There's nothing on it. And it's not like you go around and see something like a, a stump or a log or a rock on that dirt. No, no, no. They don't even want to get around that stuff. They just want to be around the dirt. When it's rock, you can see it, right? You can see the different formations of rock, different kinds of rock, different sizes of rock how the rock's laid out, if there's veins, there's all these different things with rock you can see and sometimes and, and, and figure that out. That wasn't the case. So long story short, I start going, I start going and I'm either getting bit or I see them, right? Honestly, if I see them, it's just as good. I don't even show them my bait. So I throw a top water and just kind of just go, just roll. So sometime throughout the day though, right? Um, I come across boat docks too. And I eventually start flipping those boat docks. Um, and I start getting some bites on those boat docks. So that starts becoming my secondary pattern, right? I can go down the bank until I roll up to a boat dock and I can flip it. Now all boat docks are the same. Now I gotta go in cause it's raining. Come on, man. All right, I didn't want to stop and wait till it stopped raining because I was kind of everything was going on in my mind about this video. I would come across certain docks, right? And certain docks started making sense to me after I started getting some bites on them. So now I was like, oh, this is cool. I have a bank deal and a dock deal. Perfect. There's a lot of docks on this lake, so I can just roll down the bank and do the dock deal and the bank deal. And that's all I did. Now, the next thing I got to figure out is what part of the lake is the best? It's impossible on a lake like that to really know what part of the lake is the best. It, it's And the reason that it is is because there's like three different giant sections of that lake. There, you can call them rivers, you know, or giant, giant monster creeks um, that go on for miles. And I knew one of them better than the rest of them just because that's where I spent most of my time. I tried another one. As I drove up it, and I'd never been up it, it that one looked all the same. Now, I'll get back to that. It all looked the same to me when I drove up it until I got to the very north end. Um, 
and then, or the top end, whatever you want to call it. And I got bit up there and I got bit up there pretty good. Actually, I got bit up there better in a smaller confined area. But the problem was there was two problems. One, there wasn't a lot of boat docks up there and two people. We're going to get back to the people. So there's two things we're going to get back to that one creek and those people, right? The people that were fishing this thing, the, the pressure. So I was like, man, that's a long ways to go to fish up there. And then I, I don't want to get stuck up there. It's not that far, but let me just kind of, let me see what happens for the rest of the practice. So I go back and start practicing around where I've been. I, I try a lot of different things. Nothing else seems to really work for me. I wasn't going to go chase the heron thing and I wasn't going to go chase the brush pile deal. That's just not my thing. I don't like it. It's not fun to me. Um, I honestly think the heron and the brush pile deal was where you caught bigger ones. I also saw most of the people trying to do it and the way fishing is going, this is, this is the big one. The way fishing is going is I'm just not, when I start seeing everyone do something, I, I go the opposite direction. Even if it's the way to win, I sometimes go the opposite direction. So I was watching, I was watching people do all these things and I'm like, Hey, I don't really have a lot of pressure doing what I'm doing. And I kind of find out later on of hearing, let me time out. If y'all know me, I get like zero information for this stuff. I don't really do research on lakes. Sometimes it helps me. Sometimes it hurts me. Um, here it probably helped me. It, it might've helped me hurt me at the same time. But what I found was, is that guy, I kept on hearing like, Oh, docs are going to get pressured. Docs are going to get pressured. And I was like, I started seeing people on docks. Well, then I've started hearing that like people were fishing the docks with brush on it. So I'm like, Oh, I care less about that. I'm not fishing docks with brush. And as I started watching people, they weren't fishing docks the same way I was or the same docks I was looking at. So my docs were totally unpressured. Now, so I'm all over the place on this, right? On this video. There's videos I've done in the past, right? I did a, a video and I'll, I'll put it right here, okay? The video was why pros win here when locals don't, right? That's there. The pressure deal's there. Um, certain places, like I, I wasn't fishing the docks that were probably all that great. However, those docks are probably really good on a Thursday, Friday, or maybe even a normal Saturday when no one's been on the lake. That's not the case. We had a giant tournament out there Saturday and um, now we had guys, 220 something guys have been out there for five, six, seven days practicing. It takes a toll on lakes. It does stuff different to these lakes. I have learned this. So I go about it in a different way. So. Go back to what I was saying. I was I was hearing that they were fishing a little bit different than me, looking for different docks, so my docks weren't really getting bothered. They weren't going down the banks I was, so that wasn't a big deal. Was my pattern the best? No, it was not. However, this is a three-day event. I'm going to figure out how to, like what I call them is like chase them down, right? This is a, this is a cross-country event. I'm not going to win in the first mile, but I might be able to, to do something by mile three, right? Um, I'm not going to catch a giant bag probably, which is rare because I, I do kind of go for those big bags. Um, but I was just going to try to be really, really consistent and be really, really good. And hopefully over three days that would help out. I was almost there. I was, I had the one bite and I didn't even lose it. I had the one bite that gets me in the cut, hands down. And so if you watched on day one, that wolf pack that I had, I'm telling you, they're all two and a half to three pounders. And, and I did everything right, man. And one bit it and for, and I mean, how do you do Like they always eat a jig good and they just, he just bent the pinchers. And I even let him have it for a second, let him swim off with it. And he never just never got it. That gets me in the cut. I think I do pretty good on day three. I think I catch a limit and here's why. As this practice and tournament started to happen, day one was tough on me. Day ones are always usually tough because I have a plan, but I kind of have to check everything out first and see how, because it always changes on day one. It's the weirdest thing. And I go out there and 
I should have had that one fish and it didn't work out. And then I catch one and I catch another one. And then all of a sudden I look up, it's like one o'clock. Now granted, we had a fog delay for two and a half hours. That morning back, I was counting on for like one or two fish. And it was just gonna calm me down because I knew I'd get a bite, it, like one or two bites in the first hour or two. It just, it was gonna happen. It happened every day in practice. You could tell that the, that the timing of it was, was really good till nine. We didn't start fishing till nine on, on day one. So I don't know if that had anything to do with that fish not biting, but whatever, it, it just wasn't, it, it was gonna be a little bit tougher on day one. Well, as day one progressed and it's one o'clock or two o'clock and I've got two fish, I run back up north, catch another one. But that one didn't, that one didn't say much to me. I thought it did. But when I came back down south and I had like 30 minutes left or 20 minutes left, I had, I had marked stuff. I'd gone around and I'd, I'd got tired of, of getting bites down the bank. I knew what banks to go down. The boat dock deal got so easy for me that I would just look at boat docks and go, and I'd pull over there to them and I'd flip on one and I'd get bit. And it was happening like every single boat dock that I thought was good would have a fish on it. So I'm like, I'm not fishing those anymore. I'm just gonna mark stuff that I think is good because apparently what I've been thinking was good was good. Like it was working for me. So I marked a whole bunch of stuff. Day one, all, the boat docks that I had never fished, those are the docks that got bit on. Same with day two. So when I rolled up to this one, this boat dock, and I didn't ever know which one was good. I knew about two or three of them. One of them was going to be good. And I catch my last one. But I started realizing there's really no one around me. There's no one fishing my sections, like big sections of the lake. And so I was like, okay, might not be the best section, but just because it's not the best section might not mean it's not good because you can put the best section and put 50 guys up there and every boat dock got hit five times that day. Well, some of my boat docks weren't getting hit at all. So those are good boat docks to me. So I go in there with four and I knew that hurt me. That one fish, I knew it hurt me. And it was tough on Smith. Like I was, on, I was in 51st place with eight, with eight pounds, four fish. And I was going, God, that one fish, that one fish, that one fish is gonna do it to me. And I broke off one and missed one, you know, but I landed everything else. And even the one that I that I was really upset about, I didn't even mess it up, mess that one up, right? So day two rolls out there, and this is where I start making my adjustments. I always make adjustments. And I start I start thinking about things. Well, I hadn't mentioned this yet, but in practice, I had seen three big ones. Two on one day and one on another day. And they were on on main lake stuff, and they were very, very deep banks like steep banks and i'd seen some like three and a half to four pounders the final day of practice i went out there and or the day before and i tried to fish things like that like with a shaky head different things and i for hours because i already knew what i was going to do for hours i was like let me see if i can get one of these kinds of fish like this to bite couldn't get an invite i don't even know if i ever cast around them i don't know but i know i saw some on certain sections of, of rock and steeper bank. It just made me think. So day two, I roll out there and I'm like, you know what? Before I even go run the pocket where that wolf pack was, I'm gonna go hit some stuff that's different, just different. And listen, part of fishing is you can call it luck, you can call it whatever it is, perfect timing. And if you watch day two, it shows me pulling up and I, and I, there's things in my videos that I keep for a reason. And this is one of them. It shows me pulling up. It doesn't show me randomly fishing. It shows me pulling up. You should see me make my first cast and, my, and then my, my second cast. My second cast, I catch one. Doing something I have not caught one in practice yet. I had tried it. Once again, as I realized throughout day two, it was a timing deal. So I might have hit the wrong bank tried the wrong bank and did it at the wrong time and never had a bite doing this for four days. But after now four or five days, I'm like, I still don't think what I was gonna try to do was wrong. So I was like, I, I think, let me go try it some more. Cause I'm, I'm, because if I try something so much and I've tried this a lot in practice, 
I try it so much because I think it's right, right? And I've got 20 years of experience telling me that I that this should be right. And when I caught that one fish, um, it doesn't show it. And I don't think I had it in the video, but I, I told him, I'm like, get ready. Because we're probably going to do this for the rest of the day. And yet I had never caught a fish doing this. I needed one fish to to like that light bulb went off. And I went through the pocket and caught one and one a keeper. And I came out of there and I started doing it and doing it and, and caught another one and lost a pretty good one. It's the only fish I lost the entire tournament that I actually had hooked up. And then uh, I should have had a limit doing it. I, I had four. And I was going, man, like I missed this. Like I missed this part of it. And it was easier because it was rock and I could see it. Now, granted, I still fish some bad stuff, like, cause I'm now just going blind, right? And what I mean by blind is, yeah, I can see it, but some of that rock, what it looks like on the shoreline and underneath is not the same. So, and I'm trying stuff out. So you gotta realize on a, on a hard lake where I'd say 70% of the people did not catch a limit, right? It's that hard. I'm rolling totally blind stuff right off the bat and almost have a limit in an hour and a half, two hours. So that's a strong, strong pattern. It, I would say anyone in that tournament would agree with me that like as hard as it was to have a limit almost by, by nine o'clock on a lake that's fishing that hard to catch a limit, that's strong. So I was like, I knew it. Well, problem was after about nine o'clock, I had 10 more bites doing it. Not one of them hooked up. So I still went and flipped some docks and did some things, but I stayed with it probably way too long. It didn't matter though to me because the fish that were biting were big ones and I was going to stay with it as long as possible um, until I just looked up and it was like, all right, they're probably leaving the banks and going to the docks. Let's just go flip docks. And, and, I, and I did. And it, and it helped. I did catch another one that helped. The problem with everything, and, and this is the part that I still don't know how to solve. I don't know how to solve it during the tournament because you, you kind of have to get lucky. What I mean by lucky is just like me getting a bite on the first, on the second cast of the day, I would have had to have gotten lucky. I did try to change colors. I did try to throw some different things at them. But the problem is you also got to realize it's already hard. It's in the middle of the day. And yes, I'm getting them to bite, but you don't, you don't see that the hour or the 45 minutes that I go doing this to get one or two bites. Or like I said, that sounds like a long time, but if you look up, there are guys catching one good fishermen, guys that live on the lake catching one and two fish in eight or nine hours. So I, yeah, I'm getting a bite every hour every hour, sometimes mainly two, because they were coming, my bites were coming in twos um, within like 10 casts. So since they were coming in, in twos, like I would try different things, but I was just hoping I would get one of those, those bites that led me down a different direction. And that's the hard part is, do I keep throwing this that are getting reaction strikes, that are getting bites, that are getting a fish to react they're just not eating it. Or do I throw something else that they'll probably eat, but I can't get them to actually bite it. <laughs> so I'm in this dilemma and I understand there's going to be comments of guys, you should have tried this and tried that. I, you're right. But do you know how hard it is to throw 40 different things at them? Like I had a ton of ideas, um, but I've got a limited amount of time. I've got an hour or two left. I'm running down banks. I've never been down before. I also know I can get bit flipping. Do I, and so there's a lot of different things going on. This is all part of fishing. Like I said, it's always easy to look back. And it's always easy to look on the sideline and go, well, you should have tried this. You're right. But I was already in the driver's seat that I had already figured out stuff that no one else had ever figured out. Like there was probably 200 other guys that, in that section of 12 to 15 miles, no one was figuring out. i never saw anyone doing this. So... Like I said, um, it's hard to find a really, really good pattern like I'd found and then go, oh yeah, and now I'm gonna switch it to this really, really good pattern that no one else found. If it was such a good pattern that people could find, they would have already found it, but they didn't. So 
just one of those tough deals. So I had to make a decision. I'm like, hey, I can at least get bit flipping. Um, so I went, I went flipping and I kept it honest. I would try it here and there. But actually, after about one or two o'clock, I almost got no bites. I think they had all, all left. So that was my deal. I would have liked to have third day. The third day probably couldn't have won it. Um, I don't know, though, because I learned a lot on that day, too. I learned a lot of where they were at. I'd eliminated a ton of water. The bite was really good till 9. And I still fished some bad water between 6.30 and 9. You're right, because... It's just hard to go down a perfect bank for two and a half hours, right? Like you'd get sections of perfect little bank. So the next day, man, I was going to hit those sections that I thought were really good or where I got bit and realized what sections weren't and like narrowed that timeline down. Um, and then I had all these other banks where they had, you know, shown themselves that they didn't eat. Well, I was going to run straight to those little hot spots and hope that maybe that would, those fish would bite because I was going to get there earlier. So that's my juice for Smith Lake. What's interesting to me about the whole deal is the pressure. You can not account for pressure anymore on these lakes. It's impossible. You can't do it. You can start observing it, but you can't account for it. You never know what will happen is when you get bit doing stuff on these lakes, when there's a bunch of people, um, most guys leave it alone. Like the smart guys, they leave it alone. So you can almost look around going, Man, no one's even doing this. Now, they weren't doing what I was doing. But, like, people all of a sudden started showing up on more docks up north. And that's why I left it. Because I was like, there was more pressure up there. Well, they had left that stuff alone in practice. Because the day I was up there, there was almost no one up there. But tournament day, they showed up. So, you've got... It's very hard. This pressure is really, really taking a toll on these lakes. And no matter how good you are, no matter what... And live scope, y'all know I don't talk, you know, much about live scope or whatever. But I was listening to people talk about live scope. I even saw it where those fish are there, and you can throw a bait and they'll follow it. And they don't eat it. That's a pressure thing, because earlier in the week you hear about those guys talking about, oh man, I throw in there, they they drop down and they go eat it. Pressure is moving them, and also making them not eat. So like it's moving them around to certain areas of the lake. It's, it's a whole bunch going on, guys, and it's it's hard, and, and you just got to kind of figure it out on the fly. Like, figuring it out on the fly, sometimes we're not always on the best pattern or the best section of the lake. If so, the same guy would win every tournament. What's happening is, is you sometimes just have to take what you do, take what you figured out, and make the best out of it. Like, that's all I try to do. I, there was another section of the lake that might have been way better than where I was at. Um, that other section of the lake that I told you about that I drove that all looked the same was probably better for my pattern. I just didn't know it yet. Um, I would have spent the whole next day there. The whole next day I would have spent there in practice, fishing it and learning it because I don't think anyone was doing it. But I didn't have that opportunity because I didn't figure it out till day two of the, of the tournament. So... Like I said, you just kind of sometimes have to gather up what you have and then you just have to make the best of it, right? And in 27th place was the best of it. Like I said, I was one, that one bite, I mean, I had it. I mean, it was that was the difference right there. That's what didn't get my hook if it, if it had been that much more of it, a three pounder. It's not like it was a small one, a three pounder. If it had just been bit that much more, it got my hook and I'd have been in the cut. And, and it didn't happen. And I'm okay with that. Like that's, that's part of fishing. Um, but that's my juice video guys. Like that's it. Stay tuned. My next video after this is probably going to be one. I don't know if it's going to be about my, um, live scope stuff or the next one after that might be about fish care. A guy had asked me about fish care. I'm going to do a whole video about fish care. And then it should start into my whole Grand Lake series. And then right after Grand Lake, it's going to be Pickwick series for the Toyota Championship. So I've got a lot of these things coming along. So we should have some more, more videos coming soon. I should be back on track. Anyways, see y'all guys. Hope y'all enjoyed it.